Okay, today I'm going to cover Original Gamma World, which came out during the original Dungeons and Dragons era as an expansion of Metamorphosis Alpha to expand it so you could use it for an entire world. So I have my original box set which was in horrible shape and I tried to repair it using clear plastic here. I debated doing that for more than a year because I was afraid of losing the quality of the picture but I wanted to preserve the box so I did. Now here's a note for telling people after I'm dead in the hopes I won't just throw this in the dumpster, which is a very big possibility. So I loaned away my original book, but I got this one in a secondhand store. So let's go through it. It's a science fiction game. And there are three races which are also three classes race and class were the same thing so first of all there's pure strain humans which are basically just normal humans there are humanoids which are mutated humans and then there are mutant animals we would add to this a fourth class mutant plants there are rules for creating them in here as monsters and the mutations are just too cool so we would allow them as players too now the attributes are pretty much the same as in D&D. There's physical strength, intelligence, wisdom, dexterity, charisma. Instead of wisdom, there's mental strength. So it was pretty much the same. Um, for your hit points, you would roll a number of six-sided equal to your constitution score and so that would never change and if you were a mutant you'd roll on the mutation table here this is for mutant humans and mutant animals and some of the mutants are defects and they're sort of randomly arranged in here there is a different rolling scale for humans or animals so that helps out. These are the physical mutations. You would get 1 to 4 of physical mutations, 1d4, and 1d4 mental mutations. So there's separate rolling tables for humans and animals for that. I think we rolled plants on the animal one. Okay, so lots of really cool mutations like magnetic control, poor dual brain, multiple damage, sound imitation. Here's the plant mutation table. So it was a really interesting game, and a you know, science fiction game. And back in the day, we thought that D&D &D and Gamma World were the same game, partially because of Expedition to the Barrier Peaks, which was one of my early dungeons to run. It was the first dungeon for some of my favorite players. And so we thought this was the same game. Now. One thing is, let's flip back. Instead of improving your chance to hit as you advance in level, there was a weapon cl class. The armor class was a descending armor class from one, the best armor, to ten, the worst. And the weapon class, with one being the worst and sixteen being the best. So clubs, hammers, lances, maces, and spears were the worst. And then fusion rifles, micro-missiles, and mini-missiles were the best. And so you would roll on this matrix the weapon class versus the armor class to determine whether you rolled a hit. Or if you were not using a weapon at all, you'd roll here on this table, which the chances were pretty bad on that. Uh, if you were doing mental attacks, some of the mental mutations, the person could resist them. So you'd roll your mental strength versus their mental strength. Remember, mental strength is wisdom for this game. Uh, here it shows you how much damage some of the lower tech weapons do. 
And one thing that this game had was fatigue factor. If the fight went on too long, if it went on for more than 10 rounds, you might start to wear out based on what kind of armor you're wearing or what kind of weapon you're wielding. No armor with really easy to use weapons, you would get fatigue. It'd take longer for you to start get a career acquiring minuses to hit, but the better armor or the bigger weapons, you'd start wearing out pretty quick. Okay, so we have a bunch of monsters, and there's almost no pictures of them, but the, most of these monsters are just mutated plants or mutated animals, like the Grimms, which are basically green humans who live like elves. There's a Sep, which is like a land shark. Uh, the Sarn, Zleeth. Uh, the Sleeth are mutated lizards. So... The, you know, there's a picture, but there aren't that many pictures of them. Uh, this is the Yezol. Okay, so poisons had a rating from 3 to 18. You roll 3d6 to determine that. Then you roll versus your constitution. Or you look versus your constitution at how strong this poison is versus your constitution. You might take 1, 2, or 3d6 damage, or you could die, depending on... How, co how constituted you are and how strong the poison is. Radiation had a similar chart where at first, if you had a high constitution, you might take no damage, but as the radiation got more intense, you'd start to take one to eight dice of damage. And then there's like this area in the middle where you might get a new mutation. And more than that, you would die. So, there are a lot of high-tech weapons in here. Pistols, rifles, grenades, bombs and missiles. And there's a chart to figure them out here. There's several of them. And the most complex one is a lot more complex than the one in Expedition to the Barrier Peaks. But it doesn't include... I guess, yeah, the skull and bus crossbones are discharged and you might die. We'll see. Okay, so, yeah, here's some more artifacts here. Miscellaneous energy devices, medical equipment, armor, vehicles, robotic units. And so it goes into them some. You know, things from the slug thrower, thrower, which is basically a regular gun, to laser pistols. Now, if your character continued to use the high-tech weapons from Expedition to the Barrier Peaks, it didn't throw the campaign off that much because, like, the laser pistol, I think, did 2d10 damage. It's a little more than an ordinary weapon, but not that much more. And it had power charge... Uh, power cells, which would wear out pretty quickly, and there's no way to recharge them ever. And so in Gamma World, the weapons did more. Some of them did 8d6. It's comparable to magic wands in Dungeons and Dragons, so it's still not that overpowered for the portable ones that your characters can carry around. But when you get into the bombs and missiles, like there's Neutron Bomb and Trek Bomb, Trek Bomb does Disintegration. Neutron Bomb does 100 points damage to all targets in the blast radius. These can be pretty powerful, but they're not that portable, so the character can't just carry them around. And there's, like, powered attack armor, hover cars, energy cloaks, uh, all kinds of interesting things. Uh, the Domar... It is the plastic coin that's the standard here. Uh, then there's robots. There's a checklist of what kind of robots there are and the different things they do, ranging from like ecological bots, which I thought were really fun, all the way up to the war bot and the death machine. The death machine. Is powered by a nuclear plant. It has standard vision, infravision, ultravision at a 10 kilometer range. Uh, it's 20 meters long, 9 meters wide, 4 meters high, 
Its anti-grav pads allow to move 150 kilometers per hour. Two blaster cannons that at short range do 100 points of damage. It has 16 batteries of blaster rifles for track guns that do damage. Um, eight laser batteries of five guns that do 20d6 damage. It has gives off an energy field that kills robots within 50 meters of it. It has an energy field that can take 400 points of damage before it falls. And it has 750 hit points. So it's it's a monster. So here's some experience points, an example play. And in the back you have like many TSR books, you have these charts from the book to help you look things up. And here's some random treasure. Okay. Okay, if you look at some of the other things that D&D TSR was publishing at the time, there's Empire of the Petal Throne, War of Wizards, Lankmar, Star Probes, Star Empires, Metamorphosis Alpha. So, it's really interesting, but it's out of print. Fortunately, Drive Through RPM has started issuing it print on demand with a cover that is made out of color. If you look through it, it's basically the same book, except. You get a map. The Gamma World World Map, which is basically the USA after a nuclear holocaust and global warming. So. And there was a module, there were several modules for Gamma World, but one of them was written by Gary Gygax. And they review that at a later date. And here's my dice. The ones I have left that came in Gamma World are the worst dice I've ever had. <coughs> so, Gamma World, quite an interesting game. I, I highly recommend it. There have been multiple other versions of Gamma World and this one is my favorite. I very much like it, and I hope you'll give it a try.